Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on what to avoid if you are taking SSRI antidepressants or the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the foods and beverages to avoid if you're taking these medications and also some natural supplements and prescription medications you want to avoid if you're taking SSRIs as they can interact with SSRIs to increase side effects. So what are the SSRIs? The SSRIs are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Some examples include paroxetine or Paxil, fluoxetine or Prozac, sertraline or Zoloft, and acetylopram or Ciprolax. These are medications that inhibit the reuptake of serotonin as their name implies. So normally there is a serotonergic presynaptic neuron that will release serotonin into the synapse or the synaptic cleft. And what normally happens is there's going to be some serotonin that's remaining in the synaptic cleft that then gets taken up by channels or reuptake transporters on the presynaptic neuron. So there are serotonin reuptake transporters that basically suck up the remaining serotonin back up into the presynaptic neuron. But with the SSRIs, they actually inhibit those channels. They actually inhibit these reuptake channels to lead to increased levels of serotonin in the synaptic cleft and downregulates serotonin receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Now, SSRIs are used to treat a variety of health conditions. Some of them include major depressive disorder and other conditions involving depression, anxiety disorders, including generalized anxiety disorder, and they can be used in the treatment of fibromyalgia as well. However, the normal use of SSRIs can lead to a variety of mild and or severe side effects, including nausea and headache and gastrointestinal upset. And then if the SSRI medication is discontinued too quickly or too rapidly, it can lead to a condition known as antidepressant discontinuation syndrome, which has its own symptoms. And then if there is too much serotonin, if the dose of the SSRI is too high or there's some interaction with another medication that leads to excessive amounts of serotonin, this can lead to a condition known as serotonin syndrome, which has its own symptoms as well. But the topic of this lesson is that there are a variety of factors, including dietary factors that can increase the risk of side effects. We're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. Let's first talk about a couple of changes to dosing that can cause increased risk of SSRI side effects and those conditions we talked about before. One of them is abrupt reduction or cessation of the medication. So this is something that someone wants to avoid if they are on SSRIs because this may lead to antidepressant discontinuation syndrome. This condition is more likely to occur with longer use of an antidepressant, especially if it's a higher dose of the antidepressant. And certain antidepressants have an even higher risk of causing this condition, and one of those is paroxetine. However, this condition likely only occurs in patients who are on an antidepressant for at least four to six weeks. So only patients who are on a continuous use of an antidepressant for at least four to six weeks are susceptible to this condition if there's an abrupt reduction or cessation of the medication. And then on the opposite end, a rapid increase in dose of the SSRI can also cause issues. So a rapid increase in the dose or too high of a dose of the SSRI can increase the risk of serotonin syndrome, which carries many, many different symptoms and complications. If you want more information, again, please check out my lesson on that topic. Now let's talk about some dietary factors that can increase the risk of SSRI-induced side effects. One of them is alcohol. So drinking alcohol, especially heavy alcohol consumption, can inhibit metabolism of SSRIs. The alcohol itself can also worsen SSRI side effects of drowsiness and fatigue, so it's best to avoid alcohol consumption or at least limit alcohol consumption if you are taking an SSRI medication. Another important dietary factor that can oftentimes complicate the use of many different medications is the consumption of grapefruits or grapefruit juices. So grapefruit or grapefruit juice inhibits the metabolism of many medications, including SSRIs, which may lead to higher serum levels of SSRIs. This higher serum level of SSRIs can increase the risk of side effects from their use. And this is due to the fact that grapefruit inhibits the CYP3A4 enzyme in the liver, which metabolizes SSRIs. So because of that inhibition of that enzyme, it is possible that SSRI levels can increase at least somewhat from grapefruit consumption, especially if a lot of grapefruits are consumed. Some natural supplements can also increase the risk from SSRI use. These include St. John's wort. So St. John's wort is a natural supplement that is often used because it has serotonergic activity, it actually increases serotonin levels by inhibiting reuptake. So it acts similarly to an SSRI. 
Oftentimes, patients may use this as an alternative to SSRI use for mild symptoms of depression. However, when used in combination with an SSRI, it can increase serotonin levels too much, and this may induce serotonin syndrome. So it's best to avoid St. John's wort if you are on an SSRI already. There are some other supplements that can also interact with SSRIs. One of them is 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is 5-HTP. This is a supplement that can be used for a variety of different conditions. So some patients may utilize this as a treatment for fibromyalgia. The problem is, is that 5-HTP is a serotonin precursor. So if someone is taking this as a supplement, it can increase serotonin levels. And if you're already on an SSRI, you can have even higher levels of serotonin. There's also another supplement known as Garcinia cambogia. This can interact and lead to increased serotonin levels as well. So both of these supplements can ultimately lead to higher levels of serotonin, too much serotonergic activity, and increase the risk of serotonin syndrome. Now, some over-the-counter medications and prescription medications can also interact with SSRI use. One class of medications that can interact with SSRIs are the antibiotics. So certain antibiotics may lead to increased serotonin levels, and those include linezolid and ciprofloxacin. Because they can increase levels of serotonin, they can increase the risk of serotonin syndrome. So if a patient is on an SSRI, it may be best to avoid or use an alternative to these antibiotics, if possible. Some cough medications can also interact with SSRIs. Cough medications that do interact are the ones that contain dextromethorphan. So an example would be Robitussin with DM or dextromethorphan. Dextromethorphan actually acts as an SSRI. It inhibits the reuptake of serotonin in the synaptic cleft and actually also induces the release of serotonin. So if you're already on an SSRI and you're taking a medication that contains dextromethorphan, which is a cough suppressant, if you are taking that and the SSRI can increase levels of serotonin too much, increasing the risk of serotonin syndrome as well. We can also see issues with the use of non anti-inflammatory drugs, so NSAIDs. So SSRIs actually carry a risk or a side effect of bleeding. They can cause platelet dysfunction, so they can increase the risk of mucosal bleeding, easy bruising, and other problems, especially if there's an issue with gastrointestinal bleeding. SSRIs can exacerbate that. And the problem is NSAIDs can also do the same thing, especially excessive use of NSAIDs. So excessive use of NSAIDs can actually increase the risk of bleeding, particularly upper gastrointestinal bleeds. So if a patient has an upper GI bleed, they're on an SSRI and they start taking NSAIDs, this can further exacerbate bleeding. So it's best to avoid NSAIDs. Some examples of NSAIDs include ibuprofen or Advil and naproxen. Some other prescription medications can also interact with SSRIs. And these medications include the antiplatelet medications. So it's best to talk to your healthcare provider before making any decisions with regards to medications. These medications are very important because they're often used in patients who are having issues with cardiovascular health or have cardiovascular conditions. However, the use of antiplatelet medications can worsen platelet dysfunction caused by the SSRIs. Some examples of these antiplatelet medications include aspirin and clopidogrel. These, again, are very important for cardiovascular health to avoid any further cardiovascular complications. So oftentimes it may be necessary to actually switch to a different class of antidepressant because if the SSRI is causing platelet dysfunction and then there's some antiplatelet medications that are also being utilized, this may exacerbate issues with bleeding. So again, may be required to actually switch to a different class of antidepressant. The use of other types of antidepressants along with SSRIs can worsen or increase the risk of side effects. This includes TCA antidepressants. So the tricyclic antidepressants, if they're used when a patient is already on an SSRI, this can increase levels of serotonin. The TCA antidepressants actually block reuptake of serotonin, so they can act like a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, but they're not selective for serotonin. They actually can block the reuptake of other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine. And because they can block the reuptake of serotonin, they can increase serotonin levels too much, increasing the risk of serotonin syndrome. So some examples of the TCA antidepressants include amitriptyline, disipramine, and imipramine. And these medications, particularly amitriptyline, may be used for neuropathic pain conditions and in some patients who have fibromyalgia. And then the use of monoamine oxidase inhibitors along with SSRIs can also increase serotonin levels too much. So the MAO inhibitors can significantly elevate serotonin levels because they inhibit serotonin metabolism. 
And again, this increases the risk of serotonin syndrome. Some examples of these MAO inhibitors include phenylzine or nardole, moclobamide, and isocarboxazid, which is also known as Marplan. So the use of these medications with SSRI should be avoided as these medications can further increase levels of serotonin, increasing the risk of serotonin syndrome. Now, there are some antipsychotic medications that can also interact with SSRIs, leading to increased serotonin levels as well. These medications are used to treat schizophrenia, and one example is clozapine. So clozapine is often used for severe cases of schizophrenia, and this medication can interact with SSRIs. Lithium can also be another medication that can interact with SSRIs. Lithium is used to treat bipolar disorder. Oftentimes, SSRIs are not used in patients with bipolar disorder as the SSRIs themselves can trigger manic episodes. But in the case that they are used in combination, lithium can increase the risk of side effects of SSRI use, can cause or lead to serotonin toxicity. Other pain medications can also increase the risk of side effects from SSRI use, particularly opiate medications, as they can increase serotonin levels, and the examples of these medications include tramadol and mipiridine. Again, these increase the risk of serotonin syndrome. Certain antiemetics can also increase the risk, so certain anti-nausea medications can lead to increased serotonin levels, and one of these is metoclopramide, which again increases the risk of serotonin syndrome. And then in patients with epilepsy, if a patient is on an anti-epileptic medication, these can also be pro-serotonergic. So they can also increase serotonin levels. And then if a patient is on an SSRI, this can increase the risk of side effects. Some of these include valproic acid or valproate and carbamazepine. And then some Parkinson's disease medications can also interact with SSRIs, leading to increased serotonin levels. And one of them is selegiline, which is actually a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So this is the reason why that can happen. And then migraine medications can interact with SSRI use. So certain migraine abortive therapies may lead to increased serotonin levels. These include the triptan medications, so sumatriptan, risotriptan, and zolmotriptan, all increasing the risk of SSRI-induced side effects and the possibility of serotonin syndrome. If you want to learn more about SSRI side effects, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.